And I mean, when you look at the things that he did, he was a historian, a politician. He did a lot of military history. He, his work is crucial in government. In fact, if you think about the ideas that Polybius is most famous for, he was, he was a thinker who did in-depth analysis on the idea of checks and balances. And his ideas influenced Montesquieu and John Locke. He was one of the first people to think of the people as an entity, and the people might have a voice. These ideas were very influential on the framers of the United States Constitution, the, because we the people. The fact that you could say we the people is an idea that you can trace back through Polybius. But that's not what we're going to cover about him today. Today, we're going to talk about the square that he invented. So the square that Polybius invented is a way of storing information. And depending on how you intend it, it can be a code or a cipher. But the way a Polybius square works is you take an n by n square, and here n is going to be 5, and you write the alphabet. And the problem is I have 26 letters and only 25 slots. So what should we do? Well, back then they had 25 because I and J were the same letter. So in modern days, if you were going to do this, you would take two letters and just combine them. I end up with this. So if I wanted to write a very short message, could someone tell me a very short message that we might be able to write? Hello. All right. Hello is an excellent message. So I'm going to take this square and I'm going to now encode the message hello by, and I can do it either way. I just have to make a decision. Do I want to do the row number first or the column number first? Which do you think? Row. All right. I heard row first. Sorry. So if I want to do hello, I look, okay, that's in the second row in the third column. So for hello, I'm just going to write two, three, because H is in the second row in the third column. You see how we did that? Now, what would E be? And L would be three, one. And L would be 3, 1, and O would be 3, 4. And so this would be the output of my message. Now, I, you can use this as a code or a cipher, pretty weak as a cipher, because if anyone has ever heard of this message and they're willing to try it, they'll get the answer immediately. And one of the principles that we use in modern cryptography is you have to assume person knows absolutely everything about your system except for the key. So you have to go downtown Silva and announce, I'm encrypting this message with whatever you're encrypting it with. And then you write it in chalk on the sidewalk and they should still not be able to decrypt it. So if you go in downtown Silva and say, I'm encrypting this message with a Polybius square, it's over, right? There's no key as it is. But actually Polybius wasn't primarily trying to hide information. He was just trying to make the expression of information more efficient. There are people who have used this in different things like alternative reality to try to encrypt things because it's a fun little code if you don't know it. But if you, if you know it and you're aware of its existence, then it doesn't offer much security. But what it is used for is signaling. You may not have been able to transmit information by voice, but you may have been able to set up fires at a distance where people could clearly see them. And so you would have two slots. You would have a left and a right, or you might have two different heights to indicate horizontal and vertical. And you would set up your, your torches and the number of torches in each would translate through the Polybius square. So again, this doesn't keep information secret, but it translates it into a different form where you can send it longer distances. 